What's up guys, Lon here from Android Authority and we got a chance to take a pretty extensive look at the LG V20 and we figured why not compare its camera to one of the best smartphone cameras currently on the market with the Note 7. But before we get into all of that, our very own Joshua Vigar is gonna walk you through the new camera app on the LG V20. Hey, it's Joshua Vigar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And here we're taking a look at the LG V20, but in this particular video, we're going to take a look at the cameras. Yes, cameras. We have two different lenses on the back and the front of the LG V20 that have wide angle lenses as part of the construction. So you have the ability to take some narrow shots and some wide shots, no matter which side of the cameras you're using. But we're gonna go ahead and fire up the camera here and take a look at the different elements. Now the interface of the LG V20's cameras actually use the second screen up here so you can change between a number of different modes. There is the auto mode here that will allow for the usage of the simple mode, just tapping on the screen in order to focus and taking your shot, which is really easy. And there are a few modes that you can go through, including time lapse, which I used a lot in a vlogging video that you'll be able to see here at Android Authority's YouTube channel. Now you also have pop out, the multi view, which I also used. And after that, you also have the panorama, a couple modes that are pretty standard for a camera camera like this. Moving over to the manual photo mode, you have all of the different options down here for shutter speed, the white balance, uh, even manual focus so that you can change the focus. And as you can see there, it has focus peaking. So all of that green fuzzy lining that you see around certain subjects, that means that that subject is in focus. So it'll be easy to get the focus so that you can easily get a very crisp shot. So finally we have the manual video mode. Now you get all of the same options down here with a couple of additions, including an audio monitor and the ability to change the audio settings by changing limits, also the gain, and even changing the direction, which you tried to do in a couple of clips in that vlogging video. So if we turn off the options there, you just have the full area in the viewfinder. And we turn off the lock on the autofocus and the auto exposure and you can still use it for the most part like an auto mode but it's when you get into all of the different settings that you can change everything to get the perfect shot that you want and of course you have the manual focus which will be available with the focus peaking but the focus peaking does not work while you are recording your video now that you're a little more familiar with the V20's camera software and the features that it brings to the table, let's take a look at a few camera samples and see exactly how well the V20 stacks up against the Note 7 in terms of picture quality. Something to bear in mind as we take a look at these photos is that the V20 that we have is a pre-production unit, and while we're pretty confident a whole lot isn't going to change with the final production units, it is still a possibility that there could be some changes to the camera software and its image processing. So we're gonna start with a low light shot simply because a lot more people these days are taking photos in low light. So low light performance on a smartphone camera is becoming increasingly more important. This is an image of the outside of a local bar in Berlin and without zooming in and pixel peeping, the first thing you'll notice right off the bat is the colors of these two images are very different. The image on the Note 7 has much warmer color tones, whereas the V20 is much cooler, and a warmer or cooler image is more of a matter of personal preference, but the Note 7's image is actually the one that is more accurately portraying how it looked like in real life. But that's about the only advantage that the Note 7 has in this shot. As far as detail goes, the V20 is much sharper and more detailed. If you zoom in, you'll definitely see noise, which is to be expected on any camera in low light, but the noise on the V20 is much finer and more compact, whereas the Note 7 is much more spread out and splotchy in appearance, and it just makes the overall image look much softer. Another prime example would be this cappuccino cup. Again, the Note 7 looks warmer than the image from the V20, and if you zoom in, you'll see that the Note 7's image is much softer, especially along the edges, and there's less detail. Now, the V20 isn't always superior in every low light condition. This one, for example, is from the inside of a bar, and just like the first low light shot that we looked at, the Note 7 produces an image that is much more accurate to how it was perceived in real life, while the V20 produced an image that looked extremely unnatural with excessive amounts of reds and oranges, and it's also very overexposed. If you're a foodie type person like me, you'll most likely be using your camera a lot to document restaurants that you go to and the food that you eat. So this next shot is of a sign for a restaurant called Bun Bao. Yes, I know what you're thinking. An Asian restaurant in Germany sounds a little weird, but trust me, it was good stuff. 
In terms of color and detail, they both look pretty similar, and I think most people would be happy with either one of these shots, but it won't take long to notice that the biggest difference between these two shots is the dynamic range. If you look on the right side, you can see perfectly through the windows on the Note 7, while on the V20, it's pretty tough to make out much of anything that's going on through those windows, so there's definitely more detail here on the Note 7. But what about actual food photos? Well, this first image is of a mango lassi drink that we had at this restaurant, and you'll notice right away that the colors, again, are very different. Samsung's usually known for putting a lot of saturation in their images, but next to the same photo from the V20, the Note 7 almost appears flat. Now, extra color and saturation doesn't necessarily make one photo more superior than the other because things like color temperature and saturation is a matter of personal preference, and you can easily achieve the same look by altering it in post, which most people typically do anyways when posting photos to Instagram. If you zoom in and take a closer look, it's the same story that we saw from previous photos. The noise that you see along the edges is much finer on the V20, and it's just a much sharper image overall. If we take a close look at this Bun Bao burger that we had, here you'll notice the same thing. There's much more detail and more definitive lines on the V20, while everything just looks much softer on the Note 7, and even looking at the background of this image, you'll see a lot more splotchiness, and it's just not as clean of an image as the V20s. Another type of shot that a lot of people tend to take with their smartphones are macro shots. This is a pretty simple close-up shot of a flower, and in terms of color reproduction and detail, these two look practically identical. However, you will notice that the Note 7's image looks a lot closer, and that's because it is. In our experience, the Note 7 has a much shorter working distance, allowing you to get much closer to your subject. So if you like taking macro shots and getting up close and personal, the Note 7 looks to be a better camera for that. To wrap up this camera comparison, we're going to take a look at some wide landscape shots, which is another very common type of photo that people like to take, and this will give you an even better idea of how these two cameras perform in terms of overall detail and dynamic range. This first image is of a fountain that we ran across here in Berlin. Just like the images that we looked at prior, you'll immediately notice that the Note 7's image is warmer, and in this type of shot, it works really well in Samsung's favor. The sun reflecting off the leaves around the fountain are much more prominent, whereas on the V20, it almost looks like there isn't any sun at all, and that it was shot on a completely different day. You'll also notice that again dynamic range here is also better which is easily noticeable just by looking at the clouds. You can see the sky and the details in the clouds on the Note 7 while on the V20 it's completely blown out and overexposed. The same thing can be said with the second image here where there was a lot of harsh sunlight and a lot of shadows. The clouds are blown out on this image as well and you can tell that it doesn't handle the harsh lighting from the sun bouncing off these stone walls quite as well as the Note 7, so in these type of situations, Samsung definitely wins out here. Well, that about does it for this quick feature focus and camera comparison between the V20 and the Note 7. Hopefully this gave you a better idea of how these two cameras compare in terms of photos. And if you're wondering about the superior video capabilities of the V20, you can check that out in a separate video where we spent the entire day vlogging and testing out the video quality and features of the V20. So keep it tuned here to Android Authority for the rest of our V20 coverage. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And check out the website as well for more in-depth coverage because we are your source for all things Android.